Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So today we are going to do a large um, injection. My mind just went blank. Injection Dutch pour. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, so this is an Artist Loft Level 3 16 by 40, one of my favorite canvas sizes. Um, I actually have to drive, uh, I think it's like 30, 40 minutes down the highway um, to another Michaels to get these canvases because they don't sell them in my local Michaels. So I really enjoy these canvases. So it's a 16 by 40 level three. It is the inch deep canvas. And so we are going to do, um, like I said, an injection Dutch pour. Everybody really liked the injection Dutch pour that I did that we are calling, um, was, is called Whispers of Heaven. And so this is what that one looks like. It's still drying. Um, it's drying beautifully though. But I had some people ask if they could kind of see it against a white bike background. So that's what we're going to do. Very, very, um, well, a lot of the same colors, but we're adding a couple additional ones to it. So our white is a combination of our Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. So it's about 70% of the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. 20% um, of the Bare Premium Plus. This one is the Ice Sculpture, and it is in flat. And then the rest of it is the PPG Metallic Tones Silver Base. Just to give us a little bit of a, of a metallic -y shine to our white portion. So that is going to be our flood color. I have a whole bunch of it mixed up behind me. And if I haven't told y'all before, I strain all of my white. So as soon as I'm done making the white and getting it all mixed up, I actually strain it. Um, I just use cheesecloth that you can get at pretty much anywhere. Uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, Walmart. Um, so that's where I get mine, but I strain all of my white. That way I don't have any clumps or little... When people have their paintings that dry and they have like little um, bumps and stuff in them, normally that's that's paint that didn't fully mix that dried and dried hard. So I always strain my weight, normal my white, any of the like the normal or the really light colors, um, that tans and that kind of stuff. I try and strain all of them just because they're the the biggest culprits for for clumping. So. Um, our other colors today, we have the Modern Masters Venetian Blue, Modern Masters Glacier Blue, and those are both opaque paints, Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue, some Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, and then a touch of the Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics Carbon Black. So those are the colors that we are going to use for our injections. Um, so these are our bottles. So the, um, which one is this one? This is, so both of these are the Modern Masters that I have in the, the bottles that um, I got from Sally's Beauty Supply are in these. And they're both mixed with a little bit of water um, just so we can get the fluid movement. And then we've got, this is our 24 karat gold, our metallic cobalt blue. We are going to inject a little bit of white into them. And then I've got the black. The black is the media fluid acrylics and it's just straight fluid acrylics. There's no water or anything in here. All right. So we're just going to kind of play it by ear. We're going to get the white on and then we're going to put our, and put our paints on and just we're just going to kind of see where it goes. Um, the blow dryer is the Con Air Cord Keeper 1875. Uh, lowest heat, highest air pressure. Use your attachment. And then I also use the cool button um, when I'm doing a lot. Um, and then just make sure you take your time. Um, I speed up the flooding part, but it actually takes quite a bit of time. Don't try and rush through it. Uh, take your time making sure your sides are fully covered. Because this is a Dutch pour, we're not going to be tilting. So make sure your sides are fully covered so you have a nice frame when it dries. 
and then making sure you have a nice even coat across your entire canvas. So biggest, you know, tip I can give you for, for that is, is take your time and don't rush it. And, um, yeah, that's it. So we are going to go ahead and get started.
All right, we are done. We are going to leave it just like that. Um, the paint is still really heavy on the canvas, so it's going to be interesting to see how it dries. Hopefully it dries okay. Um, so the problem was is when I put my, my line on there, I forgot where I put it because it blended in with the rest of the white, so I just kind of had to guesstimate. But I like how it's heavier up here, and it gets lighter and lighter as it goes down. Um, I was wanting more of a negative space, but I really like how this turned out. So, um, I brought my husband in to take a look at it and I was like, I don't know, I'm just going to scrape it. And, and he just kind of looked at me like, I will pull you out of here. But, um, we are going to go ahead and leave it like this. So, um, I will see everybody in part two where we will be sealing this. And as always, God bless. Good morning. All right. So the painting is all dried. Um, we did get some cracking, which I figured we would. We left a lot of paint on this canvas, but the cracking isn't as bad as I thought it would be. So that's a plus. Um, the cracking is also pretty subtle. We don't have any large, large cracks. We just have some cracks in the white. Um, but I think the coat of resin is actually going to make that smooth out and blend in. So um, I think it's going to look okay in the end. So we are going to go ahead and get this resin. Um, so we, I use the Envirotex Light Pour On High Gloss Resin. Um, I get it at Michael's. I get the, the big kit. So it's the gallon um, kit. Um, normally it's $100, but I always try and buy it whenever Michael's is having a 50% a off or a 60% off coupon to save some money. So... It is a one-to-one -one ratio that is by volume, not by weight. And um, so I've got it poured into these cups. Remember, I use all the cups that have the lines on them. So that way I can make sure I get a really good equal ratio. And let me get my spatula de-resined over here. One of the reasons I like using these silicone spatulas is because once the resin cures, you can just peel it right off. All right. So we are going to go ahead and get this mixed. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pour one into the other cup and we're going to mix it up. We probably won't need this today just because we're not using that much. We are going to use the two cup method. So while I'm mixing this up, I am going to give you all some tips. Um, whenever you are working with resin, Always make sure that you follow the manufacturer guidelines. Always wear gloves. And um, I also keep a can of denatured alcohol um, nearby because denatured alcohol is great for cleaning up resin spills. Whenever you mix it, I go in an over under motion. That way, everything that's on the bottom, I'm pulling up to the top. But we are also, once we mix this for a little bit, we are going to put it in the other cup. Again, using the two cup method. The reason you do that is anything that is at the bottom that you haven't been able to grab will actually be on the top. And then you can make sure you have a good mixture. When you're mixing your resin, if you have uh, too much resin and not enough hardener, then your resin will not cure. Um, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry tacky and will never get past the tacky stage if you don't have enough hardener. If that happens, there is no need to sand it down. Just uh, mix up another batch, being very careful to pay attention to your ratios, and then pour straight on top of it. Resin is naturally um, chemically designed to adhere to itself. If you have too much hardener and not enough resin, then um, your painting or your your resin is going to cure uneven and it's going to cure too fast. It's going to, the chemical reaction is going to happen really fast and you're not going to get a good even coat. If that happens, again, just mix up another coat, pour on top of it, um, but make sure you check your, your, your uh, resin the, on the, sorry, my mind just went blank, on your canvas because if you have a whole bunch of waves and all that because of the uneven curing, you might have to sand it down at that time to level it all out. All right, now that we've got that mixed up some, we are going to put it into the other cup, making sure to always scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup. All right. 
Now we're going to mix it up some more. Again, the over under motion, trying to make sure that we get everything, scraping your sides and also scraping the bottom of the cup. Don't worry about um, getting bubbles. We are going to use the torch to get the bubbles out. If you are doing jewelry, then you want to go really, really slow and be very careful about bubbles um, because it's, it's jewelry and it's hard to use the torch to get all of the bubbles out because of the way that jewelry is done. All right, looks like we got a nice clear coat or a clear mixture. You're gonna mix it up until it's clear. You don't have any more strings or anything like that. Looks like we have it nice and ready to go. All right, so whenever I put on my resin, I go from the outside in. Um, the reason I do that is when I go to the outside, I'm making sure that I get a good ledge around the corners, and then I pull the resin inwards towards the center. If you tried to go from the middle outwards, your resin is going to thin out, and you might have the chance that your resin is gonna pull away from the sides and not give you a good coating. Another thing that we need to do is we need to put our stacks underneath to make sure because of the springiness of canvas, resin is heavy and can cause droopage. So what we're going to do is we are going to put stacks of tiles underneath to where we have a good base. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. All right, now we have good bases underneath both so we won't have any droopage. And that's also gonna help keep the resin from pulling in the center and pulling away from the sides.
All right. Once you get done with all of that, make sure you get down level with your canvas and check and see if you have any hairs or dimples. You should be able to see any variations in your resin. So that way you can make sure that everything is nice and smooth. All right. And I do see there's a there's something right there. All right. I always wait. Um, I get everything done before I hit it with the torch. Gives the bubbles a chance to all rise to the surface. So now we are going to go ahead and hit it with a torch. Alright, that is it. I'm going to go ahead and put my cover on top of this um, so that way it'll be protected from anything falling in it. So the cover I have is just a large uh, printed canvas that I got at the uh, hospice Goodwill store. And so I just put some paint jars around the canvas. And then I take my large canvas and I just lay it right on top of those. All right. And now my canvas is completely covered and protected from anything falling in it. I will monitor this for probably the next hour to make sure any bubbles or hairs don't, um, or bubbles don't form. And um, yeah, so we will be back once this is cured. Hi everybody, welcome back. So it is all cured. I'm super excited with the way that the resin cured on it. Um, I love the way resin just brings out all of the little wispies and all of that kind of stuff. So we are going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned at the end of the video for the up-close macro shots, as well as uh, the video of the painting when it was still wet. Down in the description, all of the paint colors used. Also down in the description, links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. Um, I will be uploading some of these macro shots to my Redbubble and Teesprings accounts. Links down in the description. Um... If you would like to get prints or pillowcases and all kinds of different stuff. So check out the links below for that. Um, also down there links to my uh, link if you would like to help sponsor my channel. So for the month of November, anybody who sponsors my channel will win, will be entered in to win um, this painting. It is a 14 by 18. It was a four cup multi dirty flip. Uh, has the vinyl on it and it is sealed in polycrylic. You will win that as well as a coffee mug of my choice. And um, also go check out my website for the next uh, week. All of my uh, paintings are 30% off. I'm trying to clear out some shelf space so I can make some new stuff. So go check those out. Again, thank you very much for watching. Check all the links below. And as always, God bless.